has always been the detection of that before he got too late. He found the foot out. And she said, hmm. My son's birthday is on the 18th of May. She needs to be the boy. But they was always afraid. She said, I hope my baby's born on the 18th of May. Ah! Yeah. And they think that she's going to be born on the 18th of May. And they think that she's going to be born on the 18th of May. There and she had a talk and she'd say, I'm gonna trust in the Lord, I'm gonna trust in the Lord, I'm gonna trust in the Lord till I die. And uh, then uh, and she'd sing, That's a good apple. Give him Polly one cracker. And uh, uh, I kept her up for a while. Mother said, If you ever teach her to say any bad words, don't bring her back home. I don't want her. Pieces here are things like at my grandfather's store 60 years ago, uh, 60 something. Uh, we're just hanging on to them. I wanted someday to, uh, our children to go back to the original plan that we had when we came here. But we were to just tear this down and build a, an old fashioned country store back in, which would be like a shopping center now. And I wanted to. Quick it with my grandfather and my dad's old original equipment and uh, really make an old cracker barrel store and still at the same time modern, nice certain parts of it. It wouldn't be uh, exposed to the general public if it uh, was modern. I think that's what they did for that the old fashioned kind of store used to be. When we were here, uh in 61, I, you were selling back here. This yeah, was, this was, our, this was there. But now these little country stores are slowly uh, being absorbed by the big supermarket city. They're just a feeling for uh, milk and things like that until they get the chance to go to the supermarket. It's just, it's just a feeling. Well, the first thing I did was I bought this little old John Ward with Appalachian Homes People and Places again and I'm excited to be here at R.M. Brooks is it General Store? It is. And this is Tiffany Terry. She's the current owner and it's been her papa store and uh, when did you take over ownership? So uh, my husband and I acquired it in a year and a half before April of 2014. <laughs> so we reopened it in 2014. It was just closed for a little bit of time about a year and a half. Um, my father passed away and uh, there was a little bit of things that we took care of, and then in April of 2014, we reopened it. So what was you doing before you opened the store? What kind of line of work? So my mom has a bed and breakfast. My mom and dad have a bed and breakfast. It's been in business here in rugby for 30 years, and I actually worked for them. And then um, my dad passed away suddenly, and my mom wanted to keep the store, and I just happened to be the child that was available. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she wanted you to take over. Well, she didn't say that. That's not exactly how we planned it, but that's how it kind of panned out. So yeah, it's uh, so it's been in your family for how long? Did your original family start the store or buy it at some point? No, my great grandfather built this store in the early 20s, and he actually uh, built it in order for the state high. They were building the state highway. And he thought it would be a good business move to um, build a store and service the state workers. So when business was so good, this became his permanent residence um, of business. He had had other stores and was in businesses with his brothers for many years. And um, so then him and my great-grandmother did this. And then my grandparents uh, moved back from Oak Ridge and 
uh, started working with them. Cool. So it's been in my family since the beginning. Family tradition. Yes, sir. That's cool. So we're going to look around here, and you're going to show us a little th a few things. Uh, it's very neat. One of the things I found interesting is the pot belly stove. And, yes. Uh, so you don't see that anymore. So uh, let's take a look around. Okay, okay? let's go. Okay, guys, we decided to come outside and start while we got good sunlight, and Tiffany's going to tell us a little bit about the history outside here. Okay, so as you can see right here, we have the Gulf sign. They had gas here back in the, the 20s, and then um, if you kind of look at here, we have a porch, and that porch, there was actually a house that was attached to that. Um, when my grandparents moved back here from Oak Ridge to help my great-grandparents, there was a house, and when my husband and I acquired the store, we decided to put a porch on, and I have people come and play music and people can sit outside and eat their lunches and actually last weekend I had a band that came and played for our cruising we do every year and as you come over here uh, we actually have a primitive treehouse that treehouse was built out of the lumber um, that was took down from my grandparents house that was attached to the store I wanted to do something for my mother so that's a primitive treehouse that we started renting last year it has a queen bed and and uh, you know no electricity so you come here it's like tent camping in a treehouse with a queen bed and then when we first acquired the property it was my husband's vision to put a campground in so we have just a small campground we have 10 sites 350 amp sites and 730 amp sites and they're full hookups and of course we have tent camping that you can tent uh, as you see these ladies are tent camping and here hiking in the village and then this road right here that is closed was actually the state highway. That was the reason that my great grandfather actually um, uh, built the store was to service the state workers. Now the road is closed because the bridge is actually um, not in service for vehicles to go across it, but you can hike or you can bike down there, no motorized vehicles. So the national park owns it, it goes into the Big South Fork. Um, as you turn right here, this is what was called as Bob's Bargain Barn. So RM or Bob was my great grandfather and he's the one that actually built the store, but he also did this barn and people would come from all over and they would buy furniture. And I still have people that come in the store today and talk about the, that piece of furniture is the best piece of furniture that they have in their house. And later I'll show you a piece of furniture my mother-in-law inquired from him. And then of course over here um, was a barn that they actually um, stored hay in and different things. And then the property you see was what was known. My great grandfather kept acquiring that property and um, of course farmed the land. And my uncle owns it now, but this barn was used to you know, have hay in and they raised tobacco. So of course now there's just a little bit of array of everything in it. Um, but my son's in here making a farmhouse table. So we're gonna go see him for just a moment. Yes, let's see how what he's doing here. <laughs> Wesley, you want to come back? Yeah. What are you building here? You building these for the campground? Uh, no, this is a this is an order somebody uh, wanted a farmhouse thing to build. Oh, you build them and sell them for people then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, I custom build them. So this is my son Wesley. He's the youngest of our children. And uh, yes, these picnic tables are actually for the campground, but he's building his own picnic table or building a farmhouse table. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're using this. Uh, old lumber. The old yeah. lumber. Oh, oh my lumber. goodness. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Yeah. So. so is that something you do full time or just seven uh, out then? This is something I do on the side. Somebody asks for one, you'll build it. Yeah, people, people like the farmhouse tables. So. So this barn looks like it's been around for a little while. Did you, did, did this, was this a working farm where they did tobacco or corn or? They did, they actually did tobacco. There was a chicken house that's over here that they actually raised uh, chickens in. Um, there was hay that's been stored in here. And so the farm is still a working farm. There's actually a local um, gentleman and his son that actually leased the property from my uncle um, and they put their cattle on it. It's no longer, they no longer, you know, sow it and raise tobacco you know do tobacco grow tobacco or anything on it but it's still kind of in a working working trap setting give people a little bit idea where rugby is because people will watch this from all over and do not really comprehend exactly it's in east tennessee i guess is the first thing we could say right it's on the plateau um i'm not very good <laughs> with actually telling you we're about an hour and 15 minutes from knoxville tennessee um and then we're about two and a half hours from nashville tennessee and we're on the plateau. So we're close to uh, Jamestown, Tennessee. Um, Morgan County is the county that rugby's in. So we're kind of on that, that little end of uh, Morgan County. So do you get 
how, how does your business break up? Is it local or tourist mainly? Is it? So I do have a lot of uh, locals, and I tell people the locals are who keep me in business. So I don't change my hours through the year. Um, I'm open all year round. And it's the locals that keep me in business all year round. But lately, um, over the last several years, I've really seen a lot of tourists. And so I welcome to, you know, get to share this little piece of history with them. And so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's probably half and half through the year. But then in the wintertime, I, it's more locals. All right. Well, let's go back over and look at the store for just a minute. And okay. uh, there's some neat stuff in there I want to see. Okay. And the chicken house, just, what was this building here? So it's, it was just a storage building. Uh, I am not really sure, not sure what my uncle, what my uncle. And, and the chicken house you're talking about, I saw a building across yes. the street. So did they uh, sell the chickens here at the store, the eggs, or what did they do? No, I don't think so. I think they just raised them. And then they, um, a hatchery or however they, you know, do it would come and pick them up. I mean, chicken houses were known around in this area anyway. Um, so... So yeah, so that you can't really see it through yeah. there, but that's the chicken house. This building over here, that house was actually my great grandparents, and they lived in that house. When they ran the store, they did they run the store. That's the same grandparents that started the store. Yes, sir. Okay. So I don't because you said it was built onto on the side of the, the store. Well, that was my grandparents. So great, great grandparents. It was okay. the great grandparents that had that store. Okay. So there was actually a store in the back of the of the store. And that was where my great grandparents lived. And then my grandparents moved back from Oak Ridge and they actually built onto the side of the store and lived. And then I don't know what year, but eventually my great grandparents built that house. Okay. So. All right. Well, yeah. A lot of, a lot of family history right here, ain't they? Yeah. <laughs> so in, in your, in your mom's got the uh, gray gables, is that right? Yeah, she does. And it's just right over, you can right see it almost here. through the trees there. Yes. So that's, yes. that's a place people could come stay too, if they wanted yes. to. Yes. That they sold gas. This is not original um, gas uh, pump, not the first, but it is original to the store. I had a local guy that I went to his house one day, and I noticed I was wanting to put a, a, a gas pump in here, and this said Gulf, and so I said something to him about it, and he said it's not for sale. And about two weeks later, I said um, he called me, and he said, you know, I got to thinking about it, and he said I would like for you to have that, and so he said if you can find me another one then we can get it to you or I can we can exchange and so this is what I got for Christmas one year but this was actually sold um, by my grandfather to another man who actually sold it to this gentleman's dad and so it was original to the store I guess when they upgraded or whatever my grandfather sold it so I was privileged and blessed enough that my husband acquired it for me uh, for Christmas I got well, it for Christmas great Christmas. gift wasn't yeah. it so. so tell me about this right here it says U.S. Post Office so when when was the post office here uh, so my grandmother was the postmistress for almost 30 years I think if there's a little bit of history in there and I actually have an original flag and original signs and, and the post office um, boxes are actually original but my grandmother was a postmistress for almost and I think it was in the late 30s that she actually um, took over the post office and then it was here until she passed away and then my what dad year, what year did it um my let's see my grandfather passed away in 91 and my grandmother passed away in 94 and so in 94 my grand my dad took it over and then it was here for a little while until they moved it to another so it was a rural station and uh if you film it it's the way that it looked and i had a guy tell me one time not to change it he said because they would go over there and they do a piece of mail and then they go make a bloody sandwich and then they go and so it was never organized uh, so I keep my I keep my stuff in there, my bills, and um, don't really straighten it up much because that's what he told me not. To, you know, he said don't do that because that's how it looked. Let's look at it then. Okay. 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 So uh, we are at the post office, which actually, when my grandmother Berta Brooks and my grandfather R. O. Brooks moved back from Oak Ridge, she became the postmistress, and it was probably in the late '30s that she actually became. And after doing a little research, I had some people that came that. Their dad was a postmaster, uh, actually before she was, it came down here. She was uh, the postmaster for almost 38 years. So this flag is original, or this sign, I mean, is original. And this picture right here is a picture of my grandmother, Verda. And then there's a flag that you can see right back there, and it's actually folded up. That actually flew um, 
at the, the Board of Aid building in Rugby, and there was a gentleman that his family donated it to me. Um, he was the postmaster actually before my grandmother. And so those things are original, the U.S. Post Office. So there's oh. a... I was looking at these over here now. This, uh, these boxes, I noticed. That, so this is where people, each person had a number. Yeah, and I guess she would, she would, they would hand it. You know, she would hand it. And then over here, I guess they. I mean, I rem, I can remember people coming and turning these, you know, and getting their mail out. I mean, as, I as a kid, that. you were here quite a bit. Yeah, I can remember that. So you remember the post office running and yes and it being a I post do. office I do. and this letter right here if anybody comes it's the neatest letter and i recommend that they take the time my my mom and my uncle both and even my daughter love to write and read and um and she wrote poetry and this letter was written to my um grandfather when he was in the war and she had 10 minutes the guy would come down honk his horn and that told her she had 10 minutes to get together all the mail and she wrote this letter to him and it is comical and it, it kind of has a little rhyme and a little bit of but it was during the great depression so people were coming in and they were asking for tobacco and things that they didn't have and uh it's 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 worth wait reading so hopefully i will get the original from my mom uh, and then right here you just have the post office itself and like i told you earlier i was told not to really clean it up <laughs> my own stuff is in there and the reason being is they would you know come over here and take a piece of mail put it in the bag stamp it or do whatever and then they would go back over and make a bologna sandwich and so so are these original posters that came in they are they are and i actually had ted bundy and my sister really i did and my sister and her husband are um officers in knoxville and so um, my sister's retired now but she, that was something she wanted and i give that to her my older sister wanted a lays jar and i give that to her so so the lays jars were they originally used here back years ago they were and they were actually that i have people all the time asking me to buy them but those were kind of one of the things that to, to my understanding my grandmother the lays jars was a big deal to her and the blue jars were a big deal to her she kind of collected them so some things are for sale and some are not, just depending. Yeah, I mean, I try to price most things, but most of my stuff up high is not for sale. I have found that, um, you know, I if I have had somebody come in and if I have more than one of something, um, I will sell it to them. But it, it kind of depends. You know, I had a man and woman come in one time and they live in Elk Valley, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and they were redoing their bathroom and I had an Elk Valley medicine jar. And I said, no, I'm not gonna sell that. I said, I don't. And I got to talking to him, we visited for a little while, and I said, I'll tell you what. I said, if I have another one that's comparable to that, because my whole thing is to show, you know, show things off. And I said, if I do, I said, you can have that one. I mean, I'll sell that one to you. And, um, cause I just, it didn't, Elk Valley didn't mean anything to me, but it did to them. And it meant more for me to sell that to them and them to get pleasure of it is for me to keep it. And so I found something and I sold it to them. Well, great. Yes, uh, that's where I live at in the same county. Oh, Calumet really? County. Yeah, Elk Valley. I know Elk Valley. Uh, yeah. So this uh, was the original part of the store. All of this that you see. Um, and the stove was in here. You asked about the stove earlier. <clears throat> and so the stove, I still use it. We still put wood in it. And it was actually heated with coal. And uh, when my husband and I inquired it, it had this big gashing hole because they burned coal. Coal will burn really hot, and you can let coal be in there, and you can shut it off and bank it, and it would do all night. So there was this big gashing hole with a piece of metal on the inside that my dad had put in there. So we, we, we my husband did some research, and we replaced that, and this is all original except, like I said, this piece right here, and we had a guy that soldered it, and we only burn wood in it, and so it, we use it. And I can't imagine all the tales and stories and probably a lot of lies were told around the stove but it has been in here as long as i can remember i noticed when i came in earlier there's some guys eating lunch sitting right here just... yeah yeah so they like to and we have some guys that don't like to get us wood and we have some guys that really like to get us wood <laughs> during the winter time the local guys we kind of trade out fried pies sometimes if they'll go get us a load of wood and bring it back so um yeah right up here i was noticing uh before i forget it uh, i've noticed this memorial bridge uh rm bob brooks so what's the so one? the the bridge that you cross going from fenders to morgan is actually named after my great-grandfather and um 
that was actually made special for us. There was three made and it was given to my uncle and my mom. And my uncle and my mom wanted it to be put in the store. So they named the bridge after my uh, great-grandfather. It's been since I've had the store that there's an article somewhere in here uh, about Senator John Mark Wendell and Senator Yeager, or Sen uh, Representative John Mark Wendell and Senator Yeager actually came out and presented this and it was put up. So. So yeah, this, so was a lot of this still setting up here when you bought the store or did, have you decorated this? No, um, I might have rearranged things a little bit and believe it or not, all my coat jars have been took down and washed. My, my daughter and my now son-in-law and uh, probably my other children have helped take it down, wash it and put it back up. So, um, but it hasn't been washed recently. <laughs> but I probably took it down and re I know I took it down and rearranged it and I have placed some things up there. Um, you know that I've acquired so you still buy stuff if you see it around for the store just to decorate with I'm imagining yes. you know um, yes. or to resell maybe still yeah to resell too if I hear some I try to if somebody asks about stuff repetitively people ask then I I try to I try to get my hands on stuff that way I can have it here somebody else asks. so this part of the store was built I don't exactly know a date but after my great-grandfather decided to keep the store um and even the storage rooms weren't on it was just this part square part um then this was built on i don't have an exact date on that it it was at it, i know in the 1970s i have a video and so i know it was here in the 1970s and then through that exit door of course we seen earlier that was where it went into the radio room my my grandfather would use cb radios and ham radios you know, is that those heads over here in the corner they are that's his collection so that was built on later on of course I'm sure in the 1930s, 38, my mom was born in 38, uh, down the road. So somewhere in that time frame, that house was built on. And then this was built on. So. And then what's this little, what's the deal with the little caged in area here? There's different stuff in there. Is that, was so, that an office or? I think so. It wasn't the post office. It was just an office that my great grandfather, when we got it, there was these big metal trash can that had tons and tons of receipts. I've never seen so many receipts. So I did go in and put other stuff in there um, and hang up the signs and some of that and just rearrange things because it just, to be honest, it just was kind of cluttered in there. I noticed there's a couple of cash registers. Are they original maybe used in they the store? They are original. The, and even the one, at, that one is original to the store and so is that safe. It says R.M. Brooks. And I normally have a video going and then the cash register. And that was a really big deal to me. So the cash register, I don't know if you've got her... Did you get her opening that cash register? No. Let me, let's go back up here, Katie. So this was actually a really big deal to me when we opened because this is the original cash or one of the original cash registers. So go ahead and do it. And that's what it makes the noise every time that the girls get in there. And the girls count, we all count back the money for people like they did back in the day. And you don't put your money in your drawer until the transaction's over with. So this was a big deal for me to have. The coolers are, were a big deal. There was newer coolers in here and I said, I want them gone. The Pepsi cooler was original to this store. I can remember it being up here in the window. And the Coke cooler, there's a neat little story. I had a lady from Knoxville that came in here one day and it was pretty busy. And she said, I have something you need. And I thought in my mind, really? And so she said, I don't even know why I'm offering it, but it has to be in this um, place. And I had been looking for a Coke cooler because my business had expanded, so I needed more room. And uh, so anyway, we had a little conversation, and she said, I don't know why I'm offering this. And her brother had actually given that to her as a birthday gift, and he had passed away. So it was a really big deal. And uh, I said, well, how much do you want? And she told me, and I was re remained very calm inside and said, okay, well, send me pictures, and I'll get with you. And she sent me pictures and she said, I don't even know if it works and plugged it up and it worked. And I told my husband when he got home, I said, we have to go. And we went that weekend and it, they're the sweetest couple out of Knoxville. And they blessed me really, to be honest with you with that. So they liked your store and they want their, their machine to be a part of this history. Yeah, it was really neat. And it, like I said, and it, I know sentimentally, I mean, it, she was, it, uh, you know, she, her brother obviously meant a lot to her. And so for her to part with it was a big deal. So, yeah, I noticed uh, you have T-shirts that you all offer. So how long have you all been selling T-shirts? Is that something that you did, or was that when you are before? So, your time? no, actually, we started doing them. And really what's interesting 
is these t-shirts, and I actually need to have them printed more, but these are actually printed on the printing guild in rugby. So oh. it's the old printing guild, and I actually, um, I ha they're not what I originally started off with, um, but the young man who did my t-shirts moved away and quit doing it, and Peter in the village came down and said, hey, and I said, you know, I'd much rather my money go locally. Oh. So I think it's really neat because it's the old printing guild, Mm -hmm. And it keeps the money local, and they have their little thing. And you can it's, that's part of what you can go down there and do in Historic Rugby is go and see the printing press and learn about that stuff down there. So that's really neat. So well, I'm honored to have them doing that for me. I felt like there was something about those shirts we need to talk about. I wasn't apparently for sure what so, was. <laughs> apparently so, and it looks like I need to straight. So I have long sleeve, short sleeves, and I need to read them. <laughs> Alright, long sleeve, short sleeves, and I need to read them. In the 30s and 40s, did they serve food here too then, or was it just more of a store? Well, I think really it was, now my, my grandmother did make bologna sandwiches, and uh, they did make cold sandwiches, but, because um, I have a local guy that said one day, she, she used to have, so we had two rocking chairs right there, and I had one over here, but I've moved it so people could walk through there, but he said he'd come in here one day, and he called her, her name was Berta. He said, he walked through, he was about 15 years old, he said, Birdie, he said, how about a bologna sandwich today? And she said, nope. She said, I ain't a cook. And she said, you want a bologna sandwich? She said, go behind there and fix it yourself. <laughs> so they didn't fix hot food, um, you know, I, that I'm aware of. I mean, as long as I can remember, we had the hoop cheese. You know, we had, she had bologna, I'm sure ham, different things like that. But um, not hot food like I do. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm got them in, girls. Okay. We're gonna be. So I got two apple and one peach. Now we're gonna eat these here on a plate. Are we mm -hmm. doing? We're we gonna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. And those French fries are amazingly good. Yeah. Ooh, potatoes. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So nice, I'm gonna nice tell you something. That's fine. see everything I do. I, like when I opened up the store, I didn't just like say oh this is gonna be my menu everything has kind of developed and those french fries right there i fit and fit and i don't remember exactly how it happened but somebody said well you should do this guy steve that he was working on l wells he said you should do chicken i said i ain't doing no chicken tenders mm -hmm. i don't have time for all no no we're not doing that and now i do chicken tenders. <laughs> the french fries the same way and the girls and i would hand cut every french fry and actually i think it was my good friend liliana she was like you should do french fries. i said i want to do french fries and she said it could be so easy and i said fine if you want to cut up french fries so we cut up french fries until how many months ago katie maybe four or five months ago uh, one of my customers brought me this french fry because we cut and oh, cut oh and cut and cut and I don't know about Katie, but there's times that, like I said, my little old finger is about yeah, to get yeah. size. And then our French fries would be all different sizes. And so Bob is so sweet, and he'd come in one day, he had this box. And he said, here. And I had uh, some other little fellers that just take care of me. And anyway, I have this guy, Joe, that um, him and his wife are from Florida, and they've been a godsend. There's been so many people that God has sent into my pathway um, that's just been a blessing. Yeah. So... The French fries, I should call them relentless French fries or hesitation French fries or I don't want to do French fries. <laughs> but everybody well, loves them. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves them. So we, we, hand, we hand do them. Well, you can tell when they're, when they're hand done. Yeah. Versus frozen ones. Well, you know, that's something too. I'd rather not do a, a lot of stuff and do what I do really well yeah, as opposed to or even like my prices I get so many people that say my prices aren't high enough and like I was telling him earlier I, I gotta consider my local people and I have guys that eat in here you know they'll eat yeah. in here three or four or five times a day you know week with yeah. me. so if I charge this crazy amount they can actually afford it well in my eyes you know I'd rather so I don't know I feel like I feel like if I do right and not try to, then God's going to make up for it somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So I don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, use wisdom, you know, but um, that's another thing. You talk about faith, like I'd come in here sometimes 
See, I didn't have girls for a long time. That's how much it's grown. And that's been all faith, stepping out in faith. Like, I started off, it'd be just me by myself. And I would think that my husband was going to be here with me, but he didn't, we didn't necessarily want that. So I'd, I had to learn. Like, one day I remember walking in the village, and I remember crying, and I remember thinking, Lord, this is, and he said, I, you will never be alone, Tiffany. I will always be there with you. So it built a confidence in me. But I'd come in here and I'd say, the Lord, like my electric bill's doing that. Like I'm going to write the check and run it up there. But I think I've got like, I'm feeling like $35 maybe. And so he never failed to provide that I was faithful with coming. And no matter what that looked like. And so he's taught me, if I just show up, and do what I need, my part, then he'll do the rest of it. So that's an area that I just trust him in. And I've learned that abundant life doesn't always look abundant in money yes. or things. Right. You know. And then I've got Katie. You know, my Katie's. And they, yeah. Well, you know, that's another thing. When you bring on somebody else, you know, um, it's like, you don't, because in a business like this, you don't know. Like, I don't draw, you know, I'm not drawing five. So it might be one day I might have... Well, it used to be like, you know, a $50 day. And then on my weekends, it might be a $200 day. Right. So bringing Katie, you know, into the picture of having people, you learn that you're not in control. <laughs> so I've had to learn that. Yeah. And God's taught me that. So like with Katie, stepping out on faith to have her here and, and doing, you know. and So yeah. it's a good, good thing for both of you. It's yeah. a good thing for both of them. So well, we're so glad you're here. Well, thank you. This has yeah. been just the best. Well, it's a blessing. I tell people, I make this funny. I told God a couple years ago, it's probably been three years ago now, and I said, Lord, I was in here one night making pies, and a lot of times I used to be here late of a night, and I'd just play worship music and just, you know. And I said, and you know like everybody, you get tired, and I said, Lord, I'm kind of feeling like, I mean, I could sell everything. Like all the, you know, and I could sell my house. This is my conversation with the Lord. And I was like, I mean, everything. And I'm kind of feeling somewhere tropical, maybe. And he said, just as loud as I could hear, you know, like me and you talking. He said, well, you'd be bored in two weeks. And I thought, that's true. I would be. <laughs> so I don't guess we're selling anything and going anywhere. Who's getting the peach? Can we eat borks? Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, that's how we do it. Beautiful. One more bite. One more bite, though. And I'll put some 3 down right inside. See y'all next time. See y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.